Hi, and welcome to A Picture in a Thousand Words, brought to you by the Dunlap Institute for Astronomy and Astrophysics at the University of Toronto. In this series, we break down some of the most iconic images from space from the perspective of an astronomer. My name is Mubdi Rahman, and I'm a scientist at the Dunlap Institute, and I'm your host for this series. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at a classic image of the Whirlpool Galaxy. It's one of our near our galaxy neighbors. Uh, from the Hubble Space Telescope, fully taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. So let's dive right in. So this is the Whirlpool Galaxy. It is a local galaxy. We are seeing it face on. So that means we are seeing it as if it was, you know, if you've imagined it to be a pie tin, we're looking right down on the pie. And it also has a nice little companion over here that we're going to be talking about as well. Now, this is a classic galaxy that we can that you can see with just a pair of binoculars and a dark sky. So if you happen to be in the right place at the right time, just take out a pair of binos and you can point to it. It's actually fairly bright in the sky. So a little bit about the picture. First off, this galaxy is about 31 million light years away. So that sounds pretty far, but as far as galaxies go, it's actually yeah, kind of nearby. It's one of our one of our neighbors. It's uh, one of the reasons that you can actually see it with your own uh, with just a pair of binoculars. It's not too too far away. This entire region is about a third the size of a full moon, and what that means is that this at that distance, this is about eighty seven thousand light years from edge to edge that's actually not that far off what our um, what our milky way is in terms of size and all the colors that are in this image the red that you're seeing here the blue that you're seeing here and there's some green in there and mostly you see the green is white over there all of that is actually visible light. So the Hubble Space Telescope was taking a look at this in visible light. And the re everything except for the red. The red is mostly red, but it has also a little bit of infrared light as well. So that's red, that's light that's a little redder than our eyes can see. And all of that is what you're seeing here. So if you had, if your eyes were super sensitive and out in space, this would be very similar to what you'd be seeing. It took Hubble about nine hours to put this image together, and that you know sounds like a long time to be staring at one one galaxy, especially if it's so close and so bright. But the, what it has to do is it has to actually chunk it up. It can't stare at the entire thing because it's so big for Hubble's field of view. It has to actually do a bunch of different chunks and look at each of these smaller ones and tile it all together. So. You know, all that tiling together took about nine hours of time. So, galaxies do one thing. They spin. So, this galaxy is actually spinning, and that's part of what causes its classic spiral shape. This kind of spiral that we're seeing here is a grand design spiral. So, it's a, called a grand design spiral because you see only a couple of really strong looking spiral arms. Like in this case, we're seeing maybe two. And they're, they just look like they've been perfectly shaped. So, that's what we're seeing here at the moment. And, but this but these arms don't move together. All of these all of the galaxy is actually moving individually and so these arms are also moving this way and that way and all of that gas is moving and it's getting wound up and that's what's creating this spiral structure. In all, however, it takes a long time for this galaxy to spin all the way around. So an entire revolution of this galaxy will take about a quarter of a billion years to do. It's a long time. We're not seeing this happen in our real time, uh, but this is this is kind of where you know where this galaxy ends up living. This galaxy is not super different from our own Milky Way. It's you know it's in the same ballpark. It's not exactly the same, but it's relatively close. We're also a spiral galaxy, except we're inside our own galaxy, so we can't actually see what's going on. So let's take a look at all these different colors. So first off, you have 
the red. So the red here that we're seeing is light coming from plasmas of hydrogen and nitrogen. So these are areas where young stars are being born and they're lighting up the gas around them. And one of the things that you can notice is that all of these regions in here, they seem to be lining up along the spiral arms. That's where the vast majority of the star formation is happening, is in the spiral arms. You don't see so many of them out in these distant areas. This entire, like, all of the light that you're seeing here, however, that looks kind of fuzzy and it looks like gas, that's actually stars. They're just a lot of stars. So we're seeing millions of stars, hundreds of millions of stars even, in any given box, and all of them together are producing that light diffuse haze. If you take a look, however, if you look at the spiral arms, you can see in the spiral arms that haze looks kind of blue. If you look at this region over here, or in the companion galaxy, it looks a lot redder. And what's going on there is that actually is a property of the stars that are there. The stars that are in the spiral arms, they were more recently born, and they tend to be bluer. Whereas the stars that are in what this area is called the bulge, and this is in the satellite galaxy, these tend to be redder and older. So they're much, much, they've lived for much, much longer periods of time. And that's what we're, that's, kind of what you're seeing here. So when you see a bunch of blue stars, you typically associate them to be younger. And when you see a bunch of red stars, you typically associate them to be much older. The other thing that we can notice is if you take a look at these little dark features over here, so you can see some over here and see some over here, that's not nothing. That's actually the opposite of nothing. That is a ton of gas that's all in a very compact area, and there's so much of it, gas and dust, that's blocking the light from the stars in there. So we can't see what's underneath these in optical light. If you went to a different kind of light, like infrared light, you could start seeing a little more of the, the stars that are underneath it. But all of these things that we call dust lanes, that's where there's lots and lots of gas. And again, you can see that they tend to be on the spiral arms. This is just one of the cool things about the nature of spiral arms in, in galaxies. So let's now, now take a look at this middle section. So imagine if this galaxy, so we're looking at it face on, we're looking at it as if you know, we were looking at the top of a pie. From the side, a galaxy kind of looks like this. And we have a bulge right in the center. And so that's what this is over here. That is that bulge. And it's actually quite a bit larger. Now, first off, in the center of that bulge, there is a supermassive black hole. That sounds really awesome until you realize that most galaxies probably have a supermassive black hole right in the center. It's actually a common feature of every galaxy. The Milky Way has a supermassive black hole right in that center region. You can't really see it here because, well, it's hard to see black holes, but also because there's so many stars around it. Secondly, you'll notice that when I drew it, it's actually much fluffier, right? It looks more like a sphere than the pancake disk of the galaxy itself. And so what's going on there is these are much older stars and they've had time to relax and be pulled and pushed all the way around one another and kind of just mixed up. And so whereas the stars in the disk, in the spiral arms, they tend to be going in one direction, all sort of all well, reasonably well aligned, the stars in the bulge tend to be kind of going, hey, in any given different direction. So here, that's what's going on. And so it really is just a big fluffy mass of stars that are, that are doing this. So next we have the satellite galaxy to the Whirlpool. So this is a galaxy that is passing by the Whirlpool. We are seeing this in this careful moment uh, where it just happens to be very close and it's, it's it's its neighbor, as Mr. Rogers would say. And what we're seeing, one of the things that is that we seem to think about 
these neighboring galaxies as they pass by spiral galaxies is they're the ones that make these super strong kind of grand designs. This is, we think that the interaction between this galaxy and the main whirlpool galaxy is creating this ripple and that, or is affecting this ripple and that's why we see it so strongly. And so the way it does that is because it is essentially, it has a lot of mass. And so that mass has gravity and when, or it causes gravity. And so everything in here is this galaxy or the satellite galaxy is going to be pulling things closer to it. The things that are closer and more nearby to it, it's going to be pulling strong in a more strong fashion. The things that are further away, it'll pull, but a little less strongly. And so what that has the effect of doing is creating tides. So these are similar to the tides that we see on the ocean and from the moon uh, being caused by the moon. And it effectively makes it feel like this galaxy is getting a little bit stretched. And so that's part of what we see is the, is the effect of this. And that's why we think we're seeing these strong designs in here because of the ripple from these tides. So that is the Whirlpool Galaxy in a nutshell and its nearby companion that is moving off for hundreds of millions of years. That's all we got for today. A special thanks to Sam Schmidt who suggested we take a spin with the Whirlpool Galaxy. And thank you to the entire team with Front the Hubble Space Telescope for putting together some fantastic images for us to talk about. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and feel free to leave a comment down in the box below if you'd like to like us to break down a picture that you'd suggest. So feel free to leave um, leave any notes of things that you've seen in the news or that you've seen from a long time ago that you want us to explain. If you're watching this on the live stream, please stick around and we will be answering questions on the live chat. So thank you very much. And this was a picture in a thousand words.